Just hours before he begins his first official visit to the country, U.S. President Barack Obama has said the United States does not want to contain China. Speaking in Tokyo, Obama said he believed that a strong and prosperous China could be a source of strength for all nations. He emphasized that no one nation could meet the challenges of the 21st century on its own. While admitting that the U.S. would deal with China with its own interests in mind, he said the two countries would gain if they met the challenges of the 21st century together. The U.S. president arrives in Shanghai late on Sunday to begin a four-day visit to China. James R. Lilly, the former U.S. ambassador to China during the time of the Tiananmen Square protests, has died at the age of 81. The Washington Post said Lilly, who was born in China to an oilman father and schoolteacher mother, died in Washington from complications related to prostate cancer. Lilly had a close relationship with former President George Bush Sr., dating to the early 1970s, when Lilly headed the CIA's operations in Beijing and Bush was the chief of the U.S. mission there. Lilly, who was previously ambassador to South Korea, served as ambassador to China from 1989 to 1991. China's embassy in the Angolan capital, Luanda, has advised Chinese expats in the country not to go out alone at night. The warning comes after a number of attacks on Chinese workers living in the country. The head of the Chinese Business Council says there have been a series of violent robberies of Chinese citizens and a Chinese man was murdered in the capital, Luanda. There are tens of thousands of Chinese workers in Angola. Most are involved in Chinese-run construction and infrastructure projects funded by $5 billion worth of loans in return for oil sales. New suspicions have been raised about the apparent attempted assassination of Chen Shui-bian, the former Taiwanese leader back in 2004. Investigators who re-examined the eve of election shooting found no blood or bullet holes in his underwear or pants. But at the time, it was claimed Mr. Chen had been shot and wounded in the lower part of his abdomen. He went on to win the election by a fraction of a percentage point, but has now been sentenced to a life in jail for corruption. The new report also cast doubt on the identity of the alleged gunman. It was initially reported that he had committed suicide 10 days after the apparent shooting, but new forensic evidence is inconsistent with suicide. Housing prices in central Beijing are close to breaking the psychologically important 20,000 yuan per square meter mark. That's around $270 per square foot. The latest figures from the National Bureau of Statistics show that apartments in the central area within the 4th Ring Road now sell for 19,750 yuan per square meter. Beijing's home prices rose 2.8% year-on-year in October and 0.4% from September. Combined commercial housing projects investment in the city soared by over 50% year-on-year over the past 10 months to almost 30 billion US dollars in October. And as the US president comes to China, two of China's hottest up-and-coming rock bands, Car Sick Cars and PK-14, are currently on a debut tour of America. The two headlines, along with several other lesser-known Chinese rock outfits, hope to showcase China's latest export, rock and roll. The bands say they want to expand their fan base and change the reputation of the Chinese music scene overseas. PK-14 frontman Yan Hai Song says he's concerned about their reception in the US, particularly since they only sing in Chinese. But he needn't worry. The band's arrival has generated plenty of talk on popular American music blogs and in the media, from Time Out New York to The Village Voice. And that's the headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.